Hold on, it's processing. Processing. Checking connection. And then when you have the link, you'll send it to me or I just go to your, your uh, I'll profile. You. I'll send you the link. Yes. There we go. That's the link. live chat or what is that it i think so check it let's see if it works there's a little delay here i don't know yeah there's going to be a delay to facebook there's going to be a delay so what i'm going to do then just, is... we should just work through zoom specifically and then facebook and instagram will run in the background okay there's a little delay what's up everybody i got all these devices yeah, delay everywhere delay. i feel crazy delay, the first so time doing what i'm going to do then just, is... we should just Work through Zoom specifically, and then Facebook and Instagram will run in the background. Got it. Okay. I'm hearing a delay up, from somewhere. How do we uh, get rid of that? What the hell is that? <laughs> you probably have two devices running. Okay, hold on. This is muted. Yeah. Video and audio muted. I'm hearing a delay from somewhere. How do we get rid of that? You probably have two devices running. Okay, hold on. Okay, how about that? Yes, that works perfect. All right. So uh, I'm not able to view the questioning and all of that stuff. You can view it. So uh, you're free to, to mention it if you want to answer it or whatnot. Because right now I got myself off from Facebook to get rid of that feedback. Uh, yeah, yeah. We should just work through Zoom specifically. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see here. All right. What's up, everyone? <clears throat> this is Rachata. I haven't done uh, this podcast in a while. Because I've been so busy, I had. Uh, what was the last one? Uh, uh, the last one was, <clears throat> I believe, with. Uh, geez, I forgot already. With Jason, uh, Chino, and all of this, I think it was like Rajata's friends just chatting up or something. Uh, uh, it had good views, like over two thousand <laughs> at least. But yeah, I saw one that had like four or five thousand. Uh, the or... highest one, the steroid uh, uh, episode. I think no, it wasn't a steroid episode. The highest one was. Bachata debate, which is 12K. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was like a bachata debate about sensual and traditional and all of this mislabeling. And there were like probably four panels <laughs> from UK and all of those Ooh, uh, other nice. people of Denver. Yeah, it was like 12K. It was the highest. It's like, all right, I guess controversial subjects like that matters or whatnot. But uh, nice. Yeah, Let me just I, how are you, man? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this hey, is Anthony everybody on in. Instagram and on Facebook. Can you guys hear Rodney okay? Give me a thumbs up or wave. I think there's like a handful of people in. Can you guys hear Rodney? You can hear me, right? I could I yell. So. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it works. So, uh, this is Anthony Amina, ladies and gentlemen. I have known this guy. Since he was 12, I'm kidding. <laughs> he still looks like he's 12, but <laughs> um, I've known this guy since he was in the team called Pretty Boys and Girls. Pretty Boys and Girls. I mean, Pretty okay. Boys and Girls, yeah. yep. And uh, he was there uh, for salsa, and then he decided to get into bachata and partner up with several good dancers. Uh, uh, in fact, I remember, uh, Anthony knows this, I hate to perform, and uh, I think it was Josie Negla who, <laughs> ah, forced, the, <laughs> who that's forced right to perform. My partner was Camille. Uh, your partner was Josie Negla. I think you could still see that in YouTube. Uh, I think we did a 24-hour choreography development there, right? And we did. It was 24 like, hours. <laughs> it was, man, how are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. It's been a long, long time. I've been doing good. Still doing 24, 48 hour choreographies and performing. All right. <laughs> I just did one a couple weeks ago in Phoenix and then a few weeks before that in Houston. So uh, but are uh, you, actually you three are choreographies into... now that I've done like in less than three days in the last couple of months. But you are now into Zook, right? Doing Zook primarily now, yeah. Well, I mean, like to this day, I'm still having a hard time with Zook, dude. Uh, I know I learned Kizamba there, uh -huh. but Zook, I, I just... It's just a matter of getting used to it. And if you put your mind into it, I think you can learn it. Uh, 
I, so I have to really put my mind into it. So you are still in the business industry then? Yes, still doing all the dance stuff as well. Um, Hang on, I gotta I'm going gonna, 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 gonna to switch over your audio so you're yeah, a little ahead. bit louder for me. One second. Yeah. All right, I'm going to switch over your audio so that way you're a little bit louder for people on Instagram and Facebook. This is my first time doing live, so it's actually kind of interesting but cool. Um, so we'll see. I hate live, man. I've only done it a few times, but I hate live. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, every time I get interviewed from other podcasts, they do it live, so they, they, ask, they ask all kinds of silly questions. You have to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm just gonna turn this one on so what else what about you last question yes i'm no, still i gotta ask you a question You're man I gotta, you a, I gotta ask you a personal question here have you ever modeled or got into acting because you look good dude i mean just your, I've seen your pictures. I, I've known you for a long time. You're photogenic. So, I mean, have you ever considered Aww. this? Thank you, Rod. Yeah, I did some modeling and acting and some commercial work, some print work, and like high school, but after college, in between here and there. I was in a an international, was it Nikon or some camera? I choreographed and was a dancer and actor in um oh in olympus it was an olympus commercial and then i did some print work i did like i think a, a target commercial and like some other small magazine things over the years yeah yeah i've been i've been doing good as you know the the, the pandemic really hit our dance industry really hard uh so it's almost like two years now that i haven't done festivals I was about yeah. to do a festival this month uh, in the last weekend, but then uh, it just got postponed because Hawaii restriction is the worst in every state. <laughs> Hawaii is the only one that uh, uh, is very restrictive where people can't dance. Uh, whereas California and where I live now in my state, Nevada, uh, it's more loose. So. As you can see, you know, I'm going to, I do take jabs here and there uh, just to, just to, to not get bored. Otherwise I'll be in a podcast like this. So to those people who sees me doing past, that means I have nothing to do. Uh, but, <laughs> um, but that's pretty much it. I got into bodybuilding again, lifting weights. And my goal was just to really get in shape by that time it's Hawaii thing, but who knows, I might still go to Hawaii just for the hell of it. But other than that, um so good you said that you're still doing choreography so business is still ongoing then be uh, in spite of the pandemic yeah yeah we actually never stopped um since the very beginning we never stopped dancing um i mean it wasn't a huge group we'd have anywhere from like 6 10 15 people i did a few events um not hosting myself but taught at a few events we put together small groups of like 20, 30 people throughout the pandemic. It was essentially uh, for whoever was comfortable and wanting to dance and didn't feel that they were either uh, much at risk or, you know, weren't afraid and they just wanted to keep dancing. For them, life was more important to, yeah. to live in that sense. So, you know, I've known you where... You get into salsa, you do it. You get into bachata, you do it. You get into zouk, obviously, you do it. Uh, in one of them years, in your uh, profile, I've seen on my newsfeed actually, which says, hey, I'm gonna be a chiropractor. Uh, so now you're a chiropractor. What's the process like? What is it about being a chiropractor? Because it's not just the studying of 
the bones and, and all of that stuff. It's more of like an alternative medication. You study nutrition as well. It's part of the curriculum. So can you tell us more about it and how you got into that uh, career or industry? Yeah, definitely. Um, so it's it's a lifestyle. It really is an entire lifestyle of like how we live, what health actually is, uh, what life actually is, like what is the source and roots of life. Um, I got into it. I essentially was kind of raised in the medical model. All of my family, aunts and uncles are all, you know, either doctors, nurses working, you know, in, you know, triage and, and urgent care and pediatrics, family care. My dad was a, a respiratory therapist working in the hospital. My mom was a, a nurse manager. Uh, they met in the hospital. So we were raised in a very medically minded family. Like we always took medication. We always got the flu shot. We always got the vaccines. And it wasn't until I actually, you know, went through a very, very intense personal journey mm. with, um, with a back injury. I had, I was very active when I was younger and I had actually fractured my vertebra eight to 10 times fracture on top of refracture on top of refracture, um, had three discs herniated six to eight millimeters in my low back. Um, and I, I went through the entire medical system and I even saw some chiropractors because to me, I have two uncles and an aunt also that are chiropractors, but growing up, I always thought that chiropractic was like headaches, neck pain, and back pain. It was just like, that's, that's what chiropractic was. And it, I got a little bit of relief from seeing a couple of chiropractors, nothing longstanding. Um, I got hurt by one chiropractor. <laughs> um, and it wasn't until the fifth chiropractor that I saw, Dr. Ryan Carangola down in San Diego, um, who, you know, was seeing me taking medications every day, like barely able to, to touch my toes and like put my shoes on put my pants on just like always in pain and you know dance was the only thing that didn't make me in pain I wasn't in pain when I was on the dance floor so I would go out dancing and like my body for whatever reason I went into a total mental state because that was my like that was my drug my natural drug I would go out and dance and I would forget about the pain the, the moment I stopped dancing, I couldn't sit, stand, or even lay down for more than 10 minutes without being like an excruciating pain. So I was on every medication you could think of, Deconomy, morphine, flexoril, endomethacin, Vicodin, and they just kept ramping up my dosages, right? I had seen um, two of the best DOs in all of the Kaiser system, um, opted in for surgery three times. I had three epidurals. Uh, the first epidural helped me for like two weeks. The second one, the doctor hit my nerve. My body flew off the table and I was immediately worse than I was when I went in. And then the third one helped for like two days, three days. And you can't sue this, you can't sue this people because you signed some type of a waiver before the surgery, right? Yeah. It, it just, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, I'll get into iatrogenic causes in a little bit later, but yeah, so essentially, I went through the whole medical system, and it wasn't until the fifth chiropractor that I saw that talked to me about innate intelligence, the body's ability to heal itself, universal intelligence, sure. really understanding how the body actually works, what is homeostasis, the body trying to be in alignment, and that the yeah. body is always perfect. The body is always doing its best to maintain homeostasis. All disease in the world, every single disease in the world is merely dis-ease, lack of ease. And all dis-ease stems from three things, thoughts, traumas, and toxins. Every dis-ease, every ailment in the world that anyone ever goes through is going to stem from one or a multitude of those three things, thoughts, traumas, and toxins. Interesting. So that's kind of like, that was my eureka moment. I was like, this is chiropractic. This is what I want to do. And at that moment, that's when I said, I'm, I'm going to go to school and I'm going to become a doctor. I'm going to learn what it is to understand the neurology of the brain body connection, understand how it is that we move through life. Because for me, dance is movement, right? Movement is the fundamental basis of life. Yeah. And it's such an important piece to how we operate in the world. 
It's very interesting you say that concept of chiropractic because I see, I hear similarities with that same concept of acupuncture. Uh -huh. uh, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Acupuncture and oriental, med, oriental meds is very similar. It's just a different term, yin and yang, meridian and all of that stuff. Yep, yep. I see. Have you, uh, have you experienced uh, acupuncture at all? Have you had that when you were doing your back uh, uh, process or back surgery? Yes, process? I, it did help. I did, I did enjoy it a lot. It, I felt a lot of relaxation, right? So the acupuncture works a lot with, you know, like you were saying, the meridians, the fascial, mm -hmm. the tonal, the tonal pieces in the body. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Right. You have your bone structure, you have your muscular structures yep. and, you know, we they work hand in hand with each other. Right. As a chiropractor, you know, we do work with the nervous system. It's the brain body connection. But if your spine is out of alignment, if your body is putting pressure on nerves, they say the pressure of a dime on a nerve will impede 75 percent nerve function to that end organ. So that means your brain and your body are not communicating properly. The flow of what right. happens is not is not there. So, you know, if you have, you know, misalignments and your your spine is out of alignment, right, there's like twisting here. Something's totally going off. Yeah. Um. We, you know, you're putting pressure on the spinal cord, you're putting pressure on the nerves. So your body is not going to adapt and assimilate the way that it was made to. Your so, process of, of, of chiropractic study, you know, in, in my case, when I had my master's and I was going to go for my PhD, there are thesis, there are papers you need to write, research and all of that stuff. Yes. Is that the same process? What was your, did you write the thesis? This, did you write an article for you to, to, to get certified or, or graduate or something? And what yeah, was Yeah, so going through the, the graduate program, we have uh, case histories, we have case management, um, we, we write papers as well, you know, yeah. do different case studies. Um, and then we have our clinical, uh, part of the program, you know, we start seeing, uh, I mean, we're hands-on from day one, but then we start seeing patients, um, after around 1900 hours, around 2000 hours, we start seeing patients and the program itself is about, you know, 42 to 4,500 hours, depending on what, um, program you go through. Interesting. And, uh, now with, you love uh, reading articles, I assume, because you are in that industry. Yes. Uh, I am in the supplement bodybuilding industry, so I love reading articles as well. With certain diseases, certain supplements, certain alternative myths, do you have to have a degree? Uh, do, you, do you have to be an expert to read those articles to be able to understand them? To be able to understand it? Um... You don't need a degree. I just, I just had a comment on Facebook. Where it's like, I'm not going to listen to a doctor of chiropractic because they don't know anything. Yeah. Let me just tell you guys, the same doctors that you put in a high team like that are reading the same articles that we read. Come on, guys. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people, um, you know, talk down about chiropractic, right? right? Right now, it's actually National Chiropractic Awareness Month. Interesting. Because most people have this... Um, you know, negative connotation of like, oh, chiropractors aren't real doctors. Chiropractors are quacks. Let me tell you where that came from. <laughs> there, there was, uh, I think it was, I forget the Wilkes versus the AMA. So the AMA actually created a smear campaign. American um, Medical Association, that is, yeah. Yeah, it's the American Medical Association because chiropractors were taking away all the patients. Right. And they were seeing results. So the yeah. AMA put a smear campaign an entire campaign, and they were actually found guilty in the Supreme Court for <laughs> trying to ostracize and, you know, um, I forget the term that's used, but like, you know, excommunicate or kill the chiropractic profession. So ever since then, that's kind of like reverberated through the years of like, chiropractors aren't real doctors, chiropractors are quacks, because we don't believe in the medical model. We don't right. believe in allopathic medicine, and we don't work in a mechanistic mindset of only what you can see and prove and quantify is true. Or whatever, whatever the medical community approves, uh, because there's, a, there's, an, it, there's an organizing body. Uh, uh, it's the same 
what you believe is the same way with uh, oriental medic, uh, oriental meds, oriental medication, uh, oriental doctors. They believe in the same way you guys believe, uh, and uh, uh, it became politicized. And so they're not controlled by anyone. Uh, they can't. For example, let me give you an example. A, a doctor cannot prescribe something uh, that is not approved by the FDA, but that doesn't mean that that certain medication doesn't work. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, and, and like I said, FDA is a cartel. It's a mafia. Uh, uh, we can talk about that later if you want, but getting into this topic, Anthony, uh, lately during the pandemic, you became so popular. Not too many people know why <laughs> you became so popular. Popular in um, good and bad circle in bad ways. <laughs> you, you became so popular about uh, uh, certain things about the vaccine, about COVID-19 and all that. What is the most number one misconception about you on this topic? Um, I would say the biggest thing is that, you know, people call me an anti-vaxxer. You're an anti-vaxxer. Right. Right. Because I believe in choice. I believe right. in freedom. I believe in bodily autonomy. Right. So it, it became politicized around COVID just by saying, um, if you don't believe in vax, if you don't believe in the COVID vaccine, then you're a right wing Trump supporting conservative that's an anti vaxxer and wants people to die. All right. The things that I've been called and things that have happened. I, to I, I'm face, sure you got. I'm sure you got messages and email, right? <laughs> yeah, I got tons, but it was more uh, extreme in person, right? So I. I almost never ever wore a mask the entire time i lived life very normally from the very beginning i would go out to stores i would go out in public i was doing everything and luckily i'm part of a really incredible like freedom fighters group homeschooling group yeah i would say there's probably over 200 families and this is our homeschooling group with our kids that we were just starting to gather and we continued to live life as normal. And it became a very big thing to where we were meeting weekly in the park with like, I would say at least three, two, three, four dozen sometimes towards the beginning of the year and the end of last year having events of like one, 200 people. We hosted 200 people here at our house in April. And mind you, after we grew quite a bit, there were tons of elderly people and um, uh, not expats here, but like um, Eastern Europeans, people from Russia, people from, you know, Soviet Union that, that came over and they're like, this is ridiculous. I thought I was leaving communism and now we're coming <laughs> here and now the, the government is, is trying to instill all this. They're like, no, we don't, we don't believe the, the nonsense and propaganda that they're pushing on us. So I've been communicating with people in their 70s and 80s, unmasked, unvaccinated, unmuzzled, and living life normally. This has been my reality the past two years. So really, your your stance is more of like freedom of choice. It's not about whether the vaccine works or not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So when people say, so when you don't wear masks, it's not because you want to protect yourself. It's just the, it's just your decision. It's your decision in life. Yeah. I mean, masks really don't, don't do anything unless you're, you're sneezing or coughing or like in someone's face, you know, right. If, if we sneeze and cough, like, boom, okay, we're, we're here. Right. And the amount of masks that go on, like all the different things that happen, it's like, it does such, such little. And I've had, so many people that are very pro-vaccine and anti-mask, very pro-vaccine and anti-mandates. I, ha- I happen mandates. to be, I happen to be pro-vaccine now. I was anti-vaccine. The only vaccine I've ever had was in my childhood, uh, measles. Uh-huh. And then I went to the Philippines for schooling. We, we have a choice there whether to get vaccinated or not. I never got vaccinated ever since. I don't get flu vaccine. I do not get flu. I get cold every now and then, but I have a very high immune system. So generally my belief is like, what the fuck is this vaccine for? You know, I'm not gonna do that. Um, And then I decided in April to get vaccinated by Pfizer twice. Uh, uh, 
It's just then, one of those things. Wait, 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 wait. It's just one of those things where you see some people you know, students, mm -hmm, friends, mm -hmm. uh, relatives dying. And mm -hmm. some of those people are really freaking healthy. They weren't even old, you know? And so it's like, maybe I should get the vaccine. My mentality with this is, all right, if this works, whether it works or not, I did it, I did it. And I did the vaccine, not because, I did the vaccine in this mentality. I hope it works. Yeah. And so that was my choice. Now, my belief in this area is, your you don't believe you should get you should get vaccinated in this particular vaccine certain people like my relatives don't want to get vaccinated because they don't trust the vaccine it was rushed that doesn't mean they don't believe in vaccination they get vaccinated when they were kids their kids are vaccinated with flu all right uh, my take of this is if that is your choice i respect it okay yeah. You also got to respect my choice as being vaccinated. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to voice out my emotion when someone I know dies. I was like, man, maybe you should get vaccinated, man. I was like, you know, I would still have that frustration, although I respect the freedom of choice. We're in America. Whether you wear a mask or not, we're in America. I actually dis I agree with you about not wearing masks. I'm vaccinated. I don't have to freaking wear masks. You know, well, so. I te technically, I want to say two things. Technically, you're you're unvaccinated now because you don't have your third booster. <laughs> no, 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 really. Okay, at that's, first, that's let's where talk this about goes. That. Let's talk about that. Goes. At first, the booster was created for people, for special people, meaning they had a very low immune system. They have an underlying disease or illness, like. They're probably cancer patient or whatnot. And then now what I'm hearing, and this is exactly why I don't like this process that it became politicized. Now, if you want to get the booster, go ahead. It's now for everyone. <laughs> no, but the, they're with the QR codes and the scans, you need to be up to date. This, this is going to turn into the, the next flu vaccine. You're going to have to get it, you know, at least annually, if not, you know, biannually or quarterly. Okay, let's get like let's that. get back to the Freedom Fighters, brother. What's the main mission of Freedom Fighter? What's the concept of it? It's just God given sovereignty. You, as a human being, have the right to make your choices. There is no singular truth. There is no one right way that works for every single person. Everyone should have the freedom and autonomy to live life the way that they think is the best way to live life. In other words, they don't want to be controlled by the government. Yeah, go controlled by the government or, or, or any body, you know, any governing body. Religion, for example. Yeah. Religion. Interesting. And so freedom fighters, do they pay taxes? Uh, I mean, I'm sure some do and some don't. Some don't, yeah. I mean, okay. taxation is theft. Government is organized crime. <laughs> I think most people know that. Um, and an interesting thing that I've learned recently is that if you actually look back at the original tax documents of how taxes were implemented, yeah, um, you cannot be taxed for your labor. You can only be taxed on your income. So a lot of people just say, well, this isn't income. This is not my income. I don't have an income because I don't have an employer. Interesting. And labor cannot be taxed. So let's get back to the vaccine. Uh, Anthony, are you vaccinated? I'm not. For, for, for COVID for or COVID. period? For COVID. I'm not. Why? There's no need for it. For me. Do you, you don't think that the, va the, va the vaccine will protect you from the virus? I don't know. I believe my body will protect me from the virus. And I also had COVID twice. Did you? Yeah. Uh, now, when you first had COVID, it was COVID. Now, when you had it the second time, was it the variant? I'm assuming so. <laughs> there's no, I mean, there's no test to differentiate. Okay, wait, wait, wait. The, the, the first time you had COVID. doesn't necessarily differentiate. 
The first time you had COVID, how did you feel? I mean, I, it was tough for like two, three days. It felt like a pretty bad flu. See? And the second one, how did you feel? The second one was easy. It was a couple of days and just very light. I was low energy, um, you know, lost a, a little bit of taste and smell, but it, it was pretty short. How did you think you got it? Uh, I have no idea. There's no way to tell because I'm always unmasked, um, traveling, uh, going. I, I've probably flew over 30, 40 times. Most of the time on the airplanes, I wasn't masked. And, you know, only this year they were like requiring uh, or I would say not ex not accepting exemptions because that was my thing. Ever since day one, I would just say, oh, I have a medical exemption. Now, you had you, you got vaccinated before uh, uh, since you were a kid, since all your life you had you got vaccinated. Before, when, right? So not all my life. When I was a kid, I would say up until about 16 or 17, I did get the standard vaccinations. And that's something to note that most people think, you know, they're vaccinated. They believe in vaccines. Vaccines save lives. But they don't realize that the half-life of most of these vaccines are anywhere from five to 10 years. Um, I, I guarantee, I, I, I hope or I wish at some point, some scientist or doctor would go and take, you know, thousands of adults and check their titers against chickenpox, measles, polio, all the vaccines that they supposedly got when they were younger, because those their, their antibodies are not necessarily gonna be there. When you bypass the body's natural immune system with immunization, I'm sorry, with vaccination, it's not true immunization because you have memory T cells, memory B cells, and vaccination bypasses the body's natural immune system by intramuscularly injecting straight into the bloodstream. So right. your body is not allowed to process and build the proper B and T cells to have full memory. And even with testing, I'm, I mean, there's so many different directions I can go on this, but you know, the concept of vaccinations, back when I was a kid, I, and I asked my mom about this, I said, can I see my vaccine card? There's like, I think maybe 16 vaccines that are on there. In today's day and age, 84 vaccines by the time a child is 18 years old. It's true. Yeah. 84. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just insane. And do so, they work? Huh? And do they work? We don't know. Right. So most people, whenever I talk about these things, most people bring up right polio or smallpox. Those are like the, the, the gold standards, the vaccines save lives. Yeah, yeah. But when you look at the history, you can go to the CDC, check the MMWR reports, morbidity, mortality, weekly reports. Yeah. And you can actually see, you know, polio was around for, you know, a, a few decades before decades. Jonas so, yeah. Salk actually came out with the vaccine in 1954 exponential decline in polio exponential decline in polio until 1954 1954 Jonas Salk comes up with the vaccine small spike in polio and then it is eradicated thank god for this vaccine so in that trend of thought you believe in the natural healing uh, uh, and whatnot then how come some people, and some of them I know, some of them you know also, die from COVID. Death is a natural process of life. And it's very doesn't unfortunate. doesn't matter what age they are, right? What was that? It doesn't matter what age they are, because some of them are really young, dude. Some were young. I mean, most were a lot older. There's some that were a lot younger. But it, it, it comes to the, it begs the question of what is health, right? You know, my heart goes out to, I have had family members that, succumb to the disease friends and you know I've, I've known people that have succumbed to the disease and it's a heartbreaking thing right death is always something that's that's hard to take um and i think the ideology of how we're raised to be so fearful of death gives us this idea that you know we're going to live forever you know we want to elongate life prolong life and what Western medicine has done is told us, well, if you take this pill and take this surgery and take this medical intervention, then your life will be extended. Right. But that's such a backwards model of what life actually is. 
because it gives a false sense of security. It really does. And Western medicine is incredible for what it does, but it's overstepped its boundaries because it's no longer about emergency care. Everything has become an emergency now. So we just, we take the pill, we take the medication, we take, we do the surgery, we do whatever necessary because we don't want to, to die or we don't want to, um, you know, fear being harmed in, in some way, shape or form. Then but how, I think, do you, how do you explain the fact that most people that got COVID that are hospitalized uh, dies because they were unvaccinated and very few people go to a hospital uh, with the people that are vaccinated. How do you explain that fact, Don? I mean, the hospital is is a place of sick people, right? They go there and the doctors, you know, everyone's trying to do their best. I understand that. But the doctors are looking from a very skewed perspective, right? If the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem is a nail. And okay. that's how the okay. Western medicine model works is... Sure. They're going in there with that idea of a hammer and every issue that is, is a nail. So they're going to go in and that, that's, that's their tool is emergency care, medical intervention in that sense. If we found a cure for cancer, if there's a vaccine for cancer, would you believe it? No, there's no vaccine for cancer. Well, let's just say security. that they come up I mean, with something. There, it's there, not there will virus, never be a vaccine if for a, cancer. If there's and a cure for cancer, would you believe it? Because you believe we have the cure to cancer, right? We have the cure to cancer. Not all. We do. It's preventative measures. Oh, well, it, of course. Every, yes. every single person on this planet has cancer. We all have anywhere from 10 to 20,000 cancerous cells in our body. I know that chiropractic and, and, and alternative medicine industry believes in the prevention. I know that uh, they're very big in that. But, but when we get to the the moment where you actually have the disease, you actually have the illness. How do we, we're now beyond prevention, okay? And let's just say cancer. How do beyond. you explain that? How do you explain that when, when it comes to cure? Yeah, so this is where emergency care comes in. And this is where we have to draw the line. And it, there's no standard. And this is the thing. They try, med, medical model, allopathic medicine tries to create a standard. And once you standardize things, you, you lose a lot of people by, by saying, no, this is the way to do it. Okay. What we need to do is empower people to feel their bodies, understand how, how their body processes, how their brain processes what happens in, in their life and how to assimilate in the world, right? I understand there's terminal illnesses, there's terminal cancers that happen, but there's also hundreds and thousands of spontaneous remissions. You're told you have a few months to live, this cancer is spreading, but there's tons of people that choose not to do chemo, not to do radiation and choose to do alternative me methods. And they go into regression. If we look at chemo and radiation specifically, they say that it's successful because the success rate gets measured, I think, up to five to seven years. Rarely do any studies go past five years. So they say, we helped you live for another five years. Radiation and chemo is great. It saved my life. But then the drop off after that, you know, six years, you know, eight years, 10 years, they're dying of cancer again, but that's not getting followed up. It's, it skews the data. So a lot of the medicine, we can only, we can only prove what's quantifiable and, and measured. And if we live in that world of black and white, we really lose what it, is, what it means to be human, right? We, we are not made to be black and white. We are not made to be you know, put in a box, standardized, quantified beings. We are made for so much more than that. Well, we are, but then uh, uh, this, this is why, because life is complicated as it is. Uh, everyone are built differently. And what I, what I meant by that is the immune system is built differently. Some people are, immune systems are very strong. Like I said, I don't get flu. 
uh, uh, some people do. Some people die from flu. I mean, for crying out loud, it's just flu, but they do die. And, and, and the statistics show that there are actually uh, uh, thousands of people die from flu every year, uh, not just hundreds of COVID. yeah hundreds, hundreds of thousands, of, thousands of people die yeah. every year due to iatrogenic cause medically and, induced and, death and to this day yes there is vaccine and there are all kinds of vaccine for flu it still does not work for some people as you know uh so it's less than 50 percent i believe huh i'm sorry what the the flu vaccine is less than 50 percent um in terms of effic efficacy it's really a shot in the dark it's it's the biggest scam or joke of, of all i've known some people to get vaccinated for, for flu and they still got flu so <laughs> i believe that i cannot disagree with you <laughs> i used to make fun of flu vaccines because it doesn't work <laughs> i guess that's a person coming from a person that's a, coming from a person who does not get flu okay very rarely uh mm -hmm. and so you have a friend and your friend just got di diagnosed with covid What's your advice? What's my advice? Not as a doctor, as a friend. What's your advice from your, based on you, from your experience, how does he treat it? To check because in with I have a flu, you're gonna tell me to do NyQuil or something, or some people to do it, oh, just take pen meds and drink a lot of water, blah, blah, yeah. blah. But with COVID. So, I mean, my, my, my elderly parents got COVID. I see, right? how old were they? How old they are didn't they? get it, they didn't get it from me because I would go down and visit them and, and they're both high risk very immunocompromised. Uh, my dad has a lot of heart issues, a lot of breathing issues, mm. um, is overweight. My mom, you know, had fibromyalgia and has some heart issues. Like they, they, they're in their late 60s and they're very, very high risk. They were extremely masked. You know, every time I went down to go visit them, they were masked. You know, we would, I would try to just, you know, just, separate a little bit from them, not be too much in them. Cause I would always travel, always be without a mask. Yeah. Um, they got COVID just about two months ago or so. And, you know, I gave them a lot of things to do, get sun, get sunlight. That's one of the main things that, that we D. are yeah. deficient in, um, get sunlight, drink a lot of water, um, you know, eat pure, eat pure. Right. Going back to the three T's, the thoughts, traumas and toxins, toxins, everything that we put into our body can either help to heal us or hurt us. And if we're eating a lot of nonsense, junk, processed foods, not eating live foods, I, I told them every day, what did you eat this morning? What did you eat this afternoon? What did you eat for dinner? Eat live food, food that is live plants something that will go bad in a, in a couple of days and doesn't have like a, a major shelf life. Um, and mind you, they, they both got it after being vaccinated twice. So I it's see. possible they could have gotten it from the vaccine. Sure. Well, I don't know about that, but okay. So that's definitely but, possible. Uh -huh. Why do you, why do you say thing that? Is vaccine shedding. Why do you say that? Why you're just you just said that a vaccine might actually give you COVID? What the hell, man? How do you? Why do you say that? Any va because if you think about what a vaccine is, a vaccine is introducing a attenuated virus, a, a weakened virus. Right. Um, and I know COVID is not a live actual virus; it's just the spike proteins. So it's an mRNA vaccine, which is a different one. Yeah. But it's still giving your body the response. It's a false, it's a false reaction that is coming into the body, but it can still stimulate a cytokine storm. Well, that's generally what your body to go in. What was that? That's generally what vaccine does. Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So my kids, for instance, were hundred percent unvaccinated, been to 12 countries, traveled the world, and they're the healthiest kids, now, right? kids that I know. You got two kids now, right? Two kids, okay. two years old and four years old. Okay. And healthiest kids that I know. Mom and I split. She decides to get them vaccinated because in court, I'm an extreme anti-vaxxer and that's going to that's gonna help her win the kids over me right. along with a lot of other things, but we won't go there. Um, so she gets them vaccinated, gets them vaccinated for polio. All of a sudden, they start just breaking out in eczema, 
rashes, having shit all over their body. So what do I have to do? I have to detox them. Then she goes, change. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's the detox like? Be specific. How did you detox? You can detox. There's many different ways to detox, you know, from heavy, heavy metals, doing um, food grade hydrogen peroxide, um, taking a lot of, um, you know, oils and um, uh, colloidal silver and just a lot of things that will help the body okay. collect, process and excrete the heavy metals in the body. Got it. So, right. So I'm doing the best that I can. And, you know, to this day, my oldest is still dealing with a lot of skin issues, which is very common and 100% definitely caused from the vaccine. Just a couple months ago, got vaccinated for MMR. Within 24 hours, extreme systemic rash, extreme measles. I was seeing everything from, from loss of eye gaze, nystagmus, um, you know, everything like they, they weren't walking properly. I was seeing a lot of like contraction and sympathetic overload, neural tone. Like it was one of the scariest moments of my life. I could not believe it. Especially, I was so lit. Especially if it's from a vaccine. Yeah. Definitively from a vaccine. So not only did he get the measles from the vaccine, but he had now all these neurological issues going on in his body. But then that is, uh, Anthony, that is, that is a suspicion of yours that they got it from the vaccine, right? No, it's no suspicion. Healthiest kids in the world. Day one, getting a vaccine. Within 24 hours, digressing to all these things. It's, to me, it's, it's clear. Clear as day. <coughs> but there's has no been, other, there's has no other been, option. Has this been confirmed by the doctors? Did you take them to the doctors? The, the doctor would never confirm that. Why do you think so? Because they are bought into the system and they say, oh, it could be just a correlative effect or it could be, you know, there's no causation. Um, I mean, they, they're bought into the system that vaccines save lives and vaccines cannot harm. All right, so, men, so you mentioned sunlight, which is vitamin D natural, uh, which does uh, boost the immune system, not to mention testosterone or all that other stuff, okay? Um, so you do believe in supplement? Uh, I mean, yeah, I supplement- let's say, zinc. And- let's say zinc, for example. I know it's, uh, it's so underrated because of the delivery uh, within the body and all oh, that yes. stuff. Uh, uh, but but then uh, given that zinc can really perpetuate and really deliver well to the cells, do you think that that's one of the best cure for COVID or virus? I mean, I don't know if I would say it's the best. I think every body processes things differently and you have to see what works for you. So indivi- each individuals are different. Like I agree with you in that one. It's individuals are, are different because, like I said, uh, my two sister in laws like, got COVID and only took them a week. A week. Uh, one of them just three days, just had a big headache. That was it. And they had kids, <laughs> and they never and they never got infected. You know, uh, and this is why they believe what they believe because right? I I'm an eyewitness myself. My wife, of course, are vaccinated. Uh, my parents are vaccinated. Uh, I already mentioned this to you before talking that certain students of mine in the Bay Area died from COVID. They had COVID, uh, COVID, then they got it the second time, died. One is on a respirator. I'm not sure if they pulled it last Saturday or not. Uh, so- I mean, <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of controversy around even respirators themselves causing more issues. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure about the respirator. It's just, I hate it when they say that because that means you're in the last stage of that quote unquote. But that, see, that, that's what I'm saying. That's the system that, that we're in. <clears throat> that's the system that they believe in. When you systemize things and standardize things, you put people into a box, right? There's a quote by Bill James. Standard, standardization leads to rigidity and rigidity causes things to break. 
we sure. look we look so much at what works for one person and try to replicate that over a standard for everyone on one of my flights i was sitting next to i don't know what her role was but she had a a packet of papers like this thick probably like 200 papers and i was just kind of like looking at what she was doing and it was COVID protocols, what the standard operating procedures were for people at different stages of COVID. And I watched her go through and edit the document and say, this needs to be taken out. She was talking with one of her colleagues next to her and they were just sitting there going through. And I, I wanted to say something so bad, but it was a really <laughs> short flight. It depends on how long the flight is, dude. <laughs> yeah, it was, I think it was from here to LA. It was like a less than an hour flight. Um, but I was just watching her and I'm like, this one person, you know, maybe she's the director of a hospital, maybe she's the, um, you know, some kind of lead organizer of standard operating procedures. When's the last time she's seen a patient? When's the last time she's been in front of someone? But she's likely writing a standard operating procedure for an entire hospital based on what? You're not looking the person in the eye. You're not with the patient. You're not seeing where they're actually at. And the further away we get from source, the more convoluted things get. And this gets into liability, right? That's why we separate in the medical model. We separate so many things and it's a trickle down effect because the more trickle down you get, the further away you get from source, the further away, the, the harder it is to assume liability. Up here at the top, they're promoting this, this, you know, guarantee more or less. If you do this and this and this, then this won't happen to you. Right. But there are no guarantees in life. And there are people that doing this, this, and this are going to die and they might not have died otherwise. Well, I agree with you in that one. There's no guarantees in life. Even the vaccine is not guaranteed. Uh, the experts will um uh admit that and if they're not admitting that's because they're trying to like dr Fauci will never admit anything and I'm, I'm tired mm -hmm. of that guy by the way but uh uh not that i don't believe in him or not i believed in him in the first in the first stage until he kept sleeping up it's like what the hell is going on but anyways just in case guys you don't know i got vaccinated twice already pfizer i followed everything i go to the mask when the store said required a mask i'm not one of those uh, people like Anthony doesn't wear masks and willing to go to jail, but nobody will take you to jail. It's a freedom of choice for crying out loud. Now, mandating vaccine for certain companies, for the government, workers, what's your feeling about it? I mean, I don't think there should be any mandates, right? I don't understand how it's become so politicized and even separated, right? With all the people speaking like my body, my choice when it comes to birthing or, or uh, you know, rape or, um, you know, all the other things where it's like, we need to honor these people's bodies, transgender people, you know, it's my body, my choice, I get to do what I want. Oh, but not with vaccines. With vaccines, you, you, have, you have to be injected, you know, and allow the government to own your bloodstream. That's just not okay. You know, that's not okay at all. And there's many people that speak out about that, that are pro-vaccine, but completely against mandates, right? If you believe in vaccines, get your vaccine. If your vaccine works, why does it matter if I'm not vaccinated? Right? right. And then if it doesn't work, why should I get it? Right. It just doesn't make sense. Because the argument of the other side is that if you're vaccinated, you're also protecting other people. Yeah, that's the virtuous part of it. They, they sell you the virtue signaling of this is my duty. I'm doing this for the greater good. There's a documentary called The Greater Good that talks really? exactly about this. Is that on Netflix? Uh, I don't know if it's on Netflix. It might be I'll look right. for it. I'll look but it's it called up. The Greater I'm, Good. I'm and it's, documentaries, so. it's, about, it's about the entire vaccine system. It goes into Bayer's reporting. It goes into the fast track of what CDC you know, how CDC fast tracks certain vaccines. The fact that there's 200 vaccines every year created for the sole purpose to get on the CDC's recommended schedule. It's a business. Interesting. Interesting. Well, it is a business. This booster thing, in my opinion, is 
It's an evident of that. Uh, someone is getting rich <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I mean, we were talking about the booster earlier and uh, not recorded, but yeah, uh, you and I agree that, I mean, at least for me, my belief in the FDA is that they're mafia. Mm -hmm. I've, I've always agreed with that, uh, getting involved in the supplement industry when uh, I, I was into my competitive days in bodybuilding uh, and all that stuff, because, you know, we had a, a battle about uh, certain uh, PEDs, uh, performance enhancing drugs versus morality and all of that versus it's been polit politicized. Uh, but yeah. for bodybuilders like us and every bodybuilders or fitness people that uh, know what I'm talking about, we're love rats. If you don't know what that term means, research it. Uh, yeah, and this is part of the reason why I got vaccinated. I'm just a love rat. Who the fuck cares? If it works, it works. At least for me. And you know what? that's my choice, mm -hmm. you know? And I do respect everyone's choice. Like sometimes I would post on my Facebook and get frustrated because I would see someone I know dropping from COVID. And when uh, I, I asked him, I was like, was he vaccinated? It's like, no. Then that really riles me up, dude. It's like, maybe you really need, he should have been vaccinated. And it's my emotion at that time when I'm on, on my outburst like that, it's not logical. You know, it's like, emotion. what if we work? Then you should still be alive right now. But that does not mean I did not respect his choice, mm -hmm. whether he wanted to wear a mask or whether he didn't want to get vaccinated or not. I still respect that choice. I mean, let me relay this because I mentioned to you about Hawaii Bachata Expo where it's been an anxiety for me for a month because Hawaii, as you know, is very strict in COVID. Mm -hmm. They have this rule. Even the governor will tell you, uh, if you're not from Hawaii, don't come to Hawaii. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's the most outrageous thing I have ever heard. But because of COVID, because our hospitals are, uh, the infection is going up, blah, blah, blah. And we can get into argument with that. But when the hotel, uh, Alohilani, which is the one hosting my event, the very first hotel to ever mandate a vaccine passport, a vaccine card, if you're an attendee, if you're an employee, if you're a guest of the hotel. When they mandated that, I didn't have any choice. It's out of my control. So I had to post it on the Hawaii Bachata Expo website. It's like, look, this is what the hotel is saying, and we're going to have to comply with it. 20% yeah. of my customers, I get emails. Some of them attack me personally. It's like, <laughs> read the website. This is not coming from me, guys. Um, because if it's my choice, I don't care if you wear a mask or not. I am vaccinated. It's your choice. But then uh, there is that. And it's like, well, I am not going to support you because I don't support people like that who does not support the freedom of choice. It's like, but it's not me. And it's out of my, it's, it's in the contract. I cannot get out of the hotel, but they don't understand that when people get emotional. So anyway, you're yeah. this, this brings up a good point because when the government sets rules, they try to, they try to see who's going to enforce the rules. Right. So governments at the top, who are the enforcers as they pass down the rules and regulations and mandates it comes down to who's going to enforce it and if it's not enforced then what's going to happen so everywhere that i that i normally go and we'll take tsa for example i almost never wore a mask through tsa until the last couple months um let's say maybe about four months ago and because previously I would just say I have medical exemption. Well, they right. stopped accepting medical exemptions. So then I would just talk with them and I would say, can you show me in writing where that is? Why do I need to wear a mask? And they could never show me in writing because I told them it's not a law. Wait, 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 wait. So you don't get it. So you don't get in trouble. They just ask you a question. But yeah. And that's the thing. Like, when I go, every store I go to, I just say, okay, well, you're enforcing this. Well, okay. Where is that coming from? Oh, well, my boss. Okay, can I talk to your boss? There was a time when I was at a store, I think it was like Safeway or Costco, probably a couple of them. It happened a couple of times where there was a guy that, um, like a 
security or whatever that followed me through the store. You can't be here. You can't be here. Uh, you're not wearing a mask. And I just did my business, went to the line. And then the, the guy was like, well, we're not going to ring you up. We're not going to ring you up. And then I was like, okay, I mean, that's, that's your choice. And then the manager comes over and he goes, and I, and he asked me and I told him, you know, it's okay. Oh, my, one of the videos ended for some reason. Does Instagram have a short thing? Anyways, he comes over, he goes, hey, ne next time come get me thing. first. Yeah. Yeah. Next time come get me so I can inform the employees that we honor medical exemptions because you're regulated by the state and federal government to honor medical exemptions. Everyone is required to do that. It's a public space, it's a public offering and you are not allowed to discriminate. So uh, Anthony, you, you mentioned to me earlier that you, you, you studied law. Uh, you, you studied the concept of law. Uh, I'm sure you, you know, the concept of the, the, the U.S. Constitution as well and all, and all of that good stuff in America. Uh -huh. Can someone sue a certain company if they require masks, if they require vaccination? Anyone that, can sue. It's not partly discrimination. Anyone can sue anyone for anything. Really, at any the point in time, is, anyone can sue anyone. The question it, the question is, would they be victorious? That depends on the judge. That depends on the state that you're in, the county that you're in. That depends on uh, uh, so many factors. There's no standard, just like in. But medicine. are they? But are they right? Is who right? The people that sues that based on discrimination because you can't. I can't get into your event because you're requiring masks, and I don't want to wear masks. I mean, is it the, the term? I mean, the company, the, the company has the right and has the reservation to reject customers. Isn't that part of the business law? Yeah, but you're rejecting based on what? Based on the policy of that company that you need to wear a mask. You can do that. And hopefully no one makes an issue of it. So what about the government requiring vaccination for all government employees? They're actually not requiring it. Not They're requiring actually it. exempt. Right. Did right. you see that? The White House. It's on, it's on, it's the, on the fine print. They're it's exempt on the fine print. from yeah. vaccines. But all of us little people down at the bottom, we're not exempt. Yeah. But you don't see that on the news. Well, what you see in the news is that they say that the government is requiring vaccination, but... If you don't want to get vaccinated, you need to submit a negative test every week. Yeah. 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 And that's just unreasonable because the tests don't even really work. Oh, 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 let's get in there. What do you mean it doesn't work, man? <laughs> what are you talking about? There's what? so many false positives, so hey, many look, false wait, wait, negatives. Wait, wait, wait. If you get into that subject, you're talking about misdiagnosis here, man. <laughs> what did I tell you earlier? The, the third leading cause of death is what? Misdi make misdiagnosis. Iatrogenic cause, medical, right. medically induced death, whether right. it be misdiagnosis, maldiagnosis, medical errors, whatever it may be, 600,000 deaths a year is the third leading cause of death. I, oh, wait a minute. How do you come up with that 6,000? Uh, uh, is that some is there a link is there is there a a a, a source that that you go to and if you do have sources uh, yeah i can i can post let's um uh, i'm sure you could post it in the comments later on on the video or whatever you know but i mean people can just scroll through my my page i i'm always posting links and articles and studies and everything like that but yeah it, the third it, leading cause of death is right behind heart disease and cancer and it's due to iatrogenic cause medically induced death Misdiagnosis, maldiagnosis, medical errors, surgery. Uh, what causes misdiagnosis? Because I know for a fact, if you have a cancer, that's not a misdiagnosis. It's obvious, right? But I there mean, are certain diseases that are not. It depends on the level of diagnosis that you're giving, like what stage. This is where the standardization piece comes in. They standardize a quantifiable measurement to say, you are this, you are 
experiencing X, Y, and Z, you're showing X, Y, and Z, therefore you have this. This is, this is, um, this puts people into a box. This is limited thinking, right? This is labeling, right? If we talk about kids and ADD, ADHD, all the labels that medicine puts onto people empowers the dis-ease. When in reality, if you actually look at terrain theory versus germ theory, that's a whole other topic. Right. Disease simply cannot propagate in a healthy host. If you are doing the right things, thinking the right things, eating the right things, yeah. breathing the right things, moving well, thinking well, eating well, if you're doing all those things, disease simply cannot propagate. And that's just that. If do you drink coffee? I do not drink coffee. Okay. I, I was just testing you there, dude. <laughs> yeah. How was your, do you drink it's anything? Funny you say that. I actually haven't eaten anything in four days. Nothing oh, so but fasting. water. You're also fasting. Are you detoxifying? Yeah. I see. Now, when you detoxify, you just drink water or is there some type of drink I, that you do? I feel it out. I feel what my body needs. I, I wasn't even planning to do this fast, but I did one day and then felt like eating, but said, no, I'm going to go. I'm going to skip this meal. I'm just going to drink water. I'm just going to drink water. And I just kept going and I have been feeling great. Now, you know, there are two or three times that I like really wanted to eat, but I just had some water and then I'll put um, lemon in water and drink yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been feeling incredible. I feel very light. I feel very coherent. I feel very sharp. I'm, I have more energy than I normally do. So it's the understanding. When was the last time, really the mind when, was the last time when was the last time you took an OTC for headaches or something? Uh, yeah. it's, it's since I told you that story 12 years ago when I was taking medication for my back pain. Yeah. I haven't taken, I haven't taken anything, any, over-the-counter medications or even prescriptive medications since 2010, 2009, 2010. Let me ask you this because you, you now you're getting into your uh, healthy lifestyle, which is in itself prevention, uh, the prevention that we were talking about. What do you eat in a normal day if you're not fasting? So it varies. I try to eat, you know, at, at least 60 to 70 percent, like raw food, uh, vegan. I do eat a lot of cheese. I do eat bread. Um, I do eat meat. Um, but I just feel what my body wants and needs in that moment. So how I, do I you know, how do you know what your body needs? I, I just tune in. I see. I just tune in and, and check in to feel what feels right. What doesn't feel right. And I eat based on that. Yeah. Okay. Let's get into the chiropractic stuff. Look at me. Look at my frame. You can see the side. It's well developed. This side, it's not. You can oh, see okay. it, right? You can see it. So there are sometimes uh, old nagging injury. I think it's a rotator cuff where I do bench press and uh -huh. it will hurt for like a week. Uh, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how heavy this is. Sometimes I do indiv individualized dumbbell it's still not growing as it is is there a cure for it because the doctor can't cure it and they don't know what the fuck it is so i think we need to take a step back when we talk about cures right we we've been programmed and indoctrinated since childhood for for centuries to think that there's a cure for things there's the medical there's the medical model of a pill for every ill Right, so they want to cure things, they want to fix things. When in reality, if you focus on the brain body connection, you focus on the nervous system, the nerves in the body, how you communicate afferently to the brain, efferently to the end organs. Your brain controls every cell, organ, and tissue in your body, literally. And if you have impingement on nerves, your body is not going to function in optimal wellness. 
course. It's going to be limited. Yeah. So, you know, it's, I, I can't say through a screen, I, I, I can't even really say with you here on the table, right? Unless I'm inside and like seeing what your nerves are doing and like checking all of that. How do you guys determine that? Do you do x-ray? Yeah, we do x-rays. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I do x-rays almost every day on patients. The concept of adjusting, okay? Because, uh, you know, Marissa, I, I talked to Marissa. I've interviewed Marissa. She, she, I know she's a chiropractor also. She doesn't believe in that, okay? She, there is a certain chiropractor that doesn't believe in adjusting. Do you believe in adjusting? Adjusting in what sense? Because are you talking about manual manipulation and like yeah, adjusting? Yeah, back pain, neck pain, blah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it helps some people. But there's Why? also people that work with the tonal What's model. the concept of, because, Anthony, I could crack my own back. I could crack this 100 ways. Am I doing chiropractic? No. So when you crack your own back, what you're essentially doing is. Go ahead. There have, was a phone there. Yeah. Say you have three, three vertebra. Okay. And this is the stuck vertebra. If you're doing something yourself and you're not getting very specific intention into that vertebra that's not moving, what you're hearing or cracking is above and below. So what's happening is the single joint that is the root cause or could be the root cause is becoming more and more hypo mobile. So it's decreasing its mobility while the ones around it are becoming hyper mobile, more mobility. So you're going to end up, you know, unless you're getting adjusted or, or being seen under care, it's like spinal, hy spinal hygiene and dental hygiene, right. right? Right. Do you brush your teeth every day? Of course. Right. Or do you just brush when you have a pain? Right. It's the same concept. You want to have the, the flossing of the spine, the movement of the spine. Some people are more sensitive and some people are less sensitive. So with Marissa, I believe she practices like probably a tonal model or activator right. or integrator. Yeah, that's what she does, yeah. Yes, yeah. I do that in my office here. So I've, I've studied um, BGI, biogeometric integration, um, a little bit of network spinal analysis. And these are all tonal models of movements, not necessarily the flying seven, rack them and crack them, let me crack everything in the body, right? So there's a lot of different ways that chiropractic can work and you need to figure out what works for you. There's no single thing that works for every single person. Right. Now, when I do remember a certain chiropractic, especially one of my students, Heidi Law, uh, who has a clinic herself. Uh -huh. So she cracked my neck. And then she would feel it. Oh, there's one thing there that that's that needs to be cracked again. What does that mean? You could feel it by touch if one needs to be adjusted. Yeah, that's possible. I mean, it could be a tonal thing. It could be that you you know feel the rotation of the spine. It could be that you feel the muscles are are taut on one side. You can feel a dip. Um, there's a lot of things that you can feel in the body and in the spine. So. The very concept of what you're telling me in the chiropractic business, yeah, number one is prevention. Number two is allowing your body to naturally heal whatever you have. So you're just guiding that body uh, through manipulation, adjustment, uh, living a healthy life. Or even through meditation. But dude, that could be in the chiropractic business or even the acupuncture business for that matter, or alternative meds industry, that could be a scam. That could be accused of scam because they could go there forever. Same with medical model. Well, medical med model, at least they could do surgery. <laughs> you know, I was like, hey, let's align this, you know. But once you do surgery, how many surgeries are you gonna end up needing down the line? When you do no surgery, how is it affecting the rest of your body? Sure. My dad had hip surgery on one, one hip. A few months later, needed to do the other hip. Right. Right. What, once we start integrating unnatural processes in order- Wait, 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 wait. Let, let's get back there. Okay. Uh, what's your suspicion of your dad? Because now that he did this, the other one, 
uh, is now affected? Is it because they were disrupting something natural or what? Yeah, totally. I see. Very educational, Anthony. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I, we think about it, the only reason we do drugs and surgery is because we're trying to mitigate harm. And a sure. lot of times sure. it's pain. Yeah. Right. We're in pain. The medical model focuses on, it's a pain-based model. It's a disease care sy system that focuses on symptoms. Yeah. When you're constantly chasing symptoms, that's a forever model. They're going to be a patient forever. That's what the medical model does. Yeah. What chiropractic does is we say we want to remove interference, but yes, you, you probably should get adjusted for the rest of your life. Just like you should exercise for the rest of your life and brush for the rest of your life. These are all preventative things that aren't focused on symptom, symptom based modalities, right? If we focus on the source, the root cause, if you're in pain, why are you in pain? Right? Getting to the root cause and addressing the root cause, because otherwise you're just going to chase symptoms forever. Yeah. And it's a never ending cycle. And that's what pharma wants. Pharma wants you on drugs for the rest of your life. Uh, of course, otherwise they'll be out of business. We know that. We know this. Uh, uh, some of us who are free thinkers know this. Now <laughs> is in the subject of vaccine, anti-vaccine, is it, is it true that if you are an anti-vaxxer, you're a uh, Republican and if you're a <laughs> And if you're a pro-vaxxer, you're a Democrat. Is this true? I really, I really hate when people politicize things like that. Like just because of the vaccine thing, I've been called a Trump supporter. I've been called a right-wing extremist, a conservative. I am, I am very like anti-establishment. I'm against all government. Right, right. And I want, you know, the less government, the better. Right. Um, so I just, I think it's, funny so i mean to answer your question bluntly no if <laughs> and i think you know that i agree that. i agree <laughs> you know that's one thing that people need to realize is you can't politicize vaccines with you know right and left wing i mean that's i i think that's what the system wants to do they want to separate people by saying if you believe this then you're against us we need right. to realize like Everyone is really just trying to do their best. They really are. We, I, I think what we lost and losing in this country is really the freedom of choice. And of course, the government, the government controlling every population there. And it's is. not even in this country. Have you seen well, what's happening in Australia? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's Jeez, right it's like martial yeah. law. I know. I know. This is not okay. No, it's not okay. In that, in that sense of freedom, uh, uh, it's not okay. And uh, I don't like it. Uh, like I said, you know, uh, um, I got vaccinated, but that doesn't mean I don't respect the other person who has a choice of not to get vaccinated. Can you, t can you tell us why you got vaccinated? You, you told me earlier. I got vaccinated because maybe it'll work. It's a business decision. Yeah, you said it was a business decision. And it, that brings up a point. Um, one of my friends, uh, Lisa, posted this thing about consent yesterday. Yeah. And there's like enthusiastic consent, willing consent, unwilling consent, and coerced <laughs> consent. Right? And they were talking yeah. about it from a, a, a sex position. Like, yeah. if you can consent to, you know, being sexually intimate with someone or not. Um, and I said, well, does this same you know, four stages of consent also, you know, translate over to vaccines because there are some people that were enthusiastic consent. Yes, oh, I'm the first one to get vaccinated. Yes, yes, yes. That's enthusiastic consent. Then yeah. you have people that are like willing consent. Well, like, uh, I mean, I guess I can do it because, you know, the, the harm is less than the good. And then the unwilling consent, it's like, well, you're actually going to be taking away some of my things so I should just say yes, because I don't want to have to deal with the stress later. And then yeah. there's coerced consent where you're literally being forced, you know, of what we're being told, 
you know, they, they say, well, no one's going to come to your house and force vaccinate you. Oh, wait, hold on. But now they're going door to door doing <laughs> vaccinations. <laughs> and it gets to the point where it's like, okay, well, you, you can't fly. You can't go to restaurants. You can't go to movie theaters. Uh, you can't do anything. You can't leave your home. You can't even have, you know, Christmas at your house or Thanksgiving at your house with your family unless you're vaccinated. Yeah. It's getting I into a controlled state. I mean, Anthony, I'm not an extremist. I'm pretty much in the middle. That's why I'm neither Republican nor a Democrat. I'm neither liberal nor conservative. Uh, I left religion a long time ago because of that same, I don't like, you know, uh, not to mention hierarchies, not to mention organizing bodies and whatnot. Yeah. Yes, it was a business decision, but at the same time, it was also what if type of decision because yeah. I tell you, I'm a bodybuilder at heart, meaning if five people, they're taking something and I'm seeing it works, I don't need to read a paper. I'll take it. Okay. For example, clenbuterol. Clenbuterol is part of the beta agonist, as we know, for asthma. Okay. You could, you could be familiar with that with a cousin of uh, clenbuterol called albuterol. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, the difference between albuterol and clenbuterol is clenbuterol has some anabolic effects, meaning anti-catabolic effects, mm -hmm. okay? So what that means is that when you take clenbuterol, not only you get ripped and you keep your muscles, you lose freaking weight, you lose fat. I mean, not weight, fat, because you sweat like a mother, you know? It's same thing with those people that uses albuterol, you'd notice your face is almost like skeleton because that's the effect of yeah. the fat burning of albuterol. Now, That's like it, hacking the body. Yeah, like hacking it the is body asthma system. medication by origin. But then the, the bodybuilders discovered that it has anabolic effects and fat burning effects. And so now we use it. You know, of course the doctor will tell you, you cannot take that, <laughs> you know. It's the same with Viagra. What was it originally? It's a blood pressure medication. <laughs> Nobody knew that it's going to give you a boner. <laughs> oh, I didn't know but that. But it was, it was experimental anecdotal. It was not a study. It was not a study in the first place. So oh, yeah. that's where I'm coming from, brother. That's where I'm coming from. It's like, well, if it protects me, maybe it'll protect me. I'll do it. That's where I'm coming from. Yeah. That's so, why I'm in the middle. Of it all the, of it. There's a couple of things that I wanted to touch on. The yeah. extremism. Um, the bypassing the body's like natural system, like steroids. Yeah. I'll just start with those two. So steroids, for instance, or a lot of the things that you're, that you're using. Yeah. When we look at the short term effects, we're not looking at the bigger picture a lot of times. Absolutely. Yeah. So a lot of times we can take something and say, Oh, this, this works, this fits, this is helping me in this way, but we're not looking on the effects, the correlative effects that could last years or even decades at not in point. the not not in the bodybuilders mentality no yeah i yeah. mean but that's most people's mentality the, yeah. the western medicine mentality a lot of the science that's out there we're not looking at you know 50 years the bigger picture 100 years the big bigger picture right yeah. so i i give an example or an analogy uh, uh steroids for, for strength. Anabolic in, steroids, be specific. Anabolic steroids. <laughs> anabolic steroids. Two kinds, yeah. Anabolic steroids for strength is akin to vaccines for health. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I agree. You're, 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 you're giving a false sense of strength that is so short term when it's in short -term. reality, yeah. you'd probably be better off in the long term run in the longevity of your life to build natural immunity and everybody knows this all the pfizer scientists all the developers of these vaccines they'll tell you natural immunity is always better and i agree with your theory and assessment and your belief in that your stand i agree with you long-term effects and long-term um, plan and strategy it's much more useful than uh, like you said if we take steroids if we do not if we stop taking steroids we lose our muscles that's a given fact uh, if we get vaccinated we get protected uh, we get protected uh, let's see here because I have to reach our we get protected for a year 
and we need to get revaccinated because it's a temporary thing. So I do, I agree with your point about, about long-term care, about caring for the body because in the health industry, uh, the nutritionist, the chiropractic, the, the uh, uh, oriental uh, medication specialist agree with me in that uh, the drugs that we take causes more harm than anything else. It doesn't matter whether it's FDA, FDA approved. Mm -hmm. You don't see in the fine print, but there is the side effects right there in the fine print. You may, this may cost you blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah. You know, it's like so, the, me the, the medicine commercials, the drug commercials that we see. And the U.S. is one of the only countries that allows promotion of televised drug commercials. Yeah. yeah. Right. And they say they happy, healthy life, running and playing every medication uh, drug um, uh, commercial is the same. It's the same. Right. Everyone's playing and happy. Do you want to live a happy, healthy life? Do you want to move? Do you want to do this? Well, take this drug. But this drug could cause... Blah, 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 blah. heart disease, can, can cancer. But, but cancer doesn't disease. it, doesn't it, I don't know why people don't get bothered by this. When they say commercial of certain drugs, right? Viagra, blah, 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 you'll never doubt again. And then uh, the, the guy who's saying in the commercial, that's, yeah. the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the warning right there, dude. Yeah, <laughs> this know? total psychological manipulation on people and people you know, don't see that. This is why I use the term wake up wake up, listen, see what's going on, feel your body, what is happening, see the bigger picture. Our brain, our body, a single cell in my fingertip has more life and capability than every single drug and surgery in the world. And when people understand the microscopic health perspective, that we are literally just floating balls of protons, neutrons, and electrons. We're just yeah. energy. And when you vibrate energy at a specific level and operate to attune yourself, to channel what's coming in, what you're bringing in, you're going to wake up and start to realize that life is much bigger than what we've been told. Yeah. The second thing that I wanted to say when you talked about extreme, um, you're not an extremist. The last, I would say, year or so, I kind of coined this term. I'm like, putting thoughts together to maybe potentially put a book, but it's the concept of micro extremism for macro balance. Interesting. Right. So the whole concept is like, if I, if I live life on a balance beam, right. Micro extremism for macro balance is essentially, is essentially saying movement is the fundamental basis of life. I need to move. Oh, it's too far. Let me go back. I'm going to constantly push the boundaries of what life is and exists. Whereas most people will say, oh, well, no, I, I don't want to, I don't want to go to the extreme. I just want to stay in the middle. To me, I see complacent stagnation. And when you live in stagnation, stagnation is literally is death. Stasis is death. When you have no movement, that's death. Movement is the fundamental basis of life. Sure. And if we're constantly in a state of flux of moving, then we, we learn how far we can push our boundaries. We learn what we're capable of. And I, I briefly mentioned earlier about the pain concept, right? Pain literally only exists in the mind literally only exists in the mind. That's why Well, I, I, I agree with you because certain medication, um, this uh, uh, fools the brain into thinking about it and therefore there's no there's no pain right there i i, I agree I, with you not i'll tell every single person that you have more capability to bypass that that neural connection than bypass, any medication yeah. or drug will do yeah people yeah. have the capacity to do these things i learned this in, in in meditation i did a vipassana 10 day meditation retreat and i was completely blown away at the capacity of of what we're capable of when yeah. we attune to the micro energetic level of our body. And it's to remain equanimous, right? The whole concept is that everyone is miserable in this world because of two things. 
feelings of attachments and feelings yeah. of aversions. We want things we can't have. We don't want things that are happening. And this constant state of push and pull and flux is what creates dissonance and misery in our lives. Whereas Vipassana teaches to remain equanimous. You just observe. So you're just merely observing what's happening in your body. It's not good, it's not bad, it just is. That teaches you to cycle through and bypass that, that neuronal connection between the brain and body. It's a really an out-of-body experience that teaches you like our body is just a channel for energy for things that are coming in and out of what's happening. Well, in conclusion, Anthony, the people that are vaccinated, do you respect their decision? 100%. I would say 80, 90% of my students that I see on a regular basis are all vaccinated. So when, you see vaccinated. People, yeah. so when you see people wearing masks also, you, you respect it. 100%. 100%. And in turn, they should respect your choice as well. 100%. I think that's the big misunderstanding that we have here, uh, whether it's in social media or whether in our community, is that people look down on each other, their choices, yeah. whether their choice of clothes, whether their choice of dance styles. Uh, 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 it's so funny because we do discriminate each individual in that area based on their choices, whether their haircut, whether the dance styles they do, and now their choice of health. Um, and I think that we need, to, we need to look into that deeply as a community because everyone has a choice. We need to respect it. I think that's just the way it is. I know we get into the, oh, but we need to protect on this. Well, that's neither here nor there because everyone has their own belief. Yeah, and that's why I talk about this whole concept of respect. It's like the science has gone out the window because science has now become dogma. It's become a religion. I, there's like scientism is really a thing now. It's like the science God said, this is what it is. So this is what it must be. It's turned into a religion to where people don't respect. It's like, no, my way is the right way. And and this is the only way. This is the path to righteousness. And I see so many overlaps of, of religion in that sense. So just understanding, like, everyone is responsible for their own health. Everyone is responsible for taking care of themselves. And once we take care of ourselves first, then we can take care of those around us. Uh, let me ask you this question. Uh, were you recording all of our interviews right now? Is it being recorded? Can you check? Um, well, it's on your live, right? So. Yeah, I think I forgot to record it, dude. I, I'm not sure if we could go so it'll to be, It'll be recorded on, on your Facebook live. It, as long as it's recorded on Facebook live, live, you can download it from there. I think so. Yeah, and you could post it in your own platform. But anyway, Anthony, it's been enlightening. Uh, I know that that when certain people post on Instagram and social media, like Facebook, like you do, like I do, uh, they could be misunderstood. Uh, not just that, not only they could be misunderstood, you don't really know each individual when they post something, where they're coming from, where they came from. Uh, and it's always good to know where you're coming from. Uh, uh, and I respect that. And uh, as we set the record straight, again, individuals have their own choice. And I think that we need to respect it. And that's not just a vaccine in everything. In everything. Including on two and on one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm too anyway, much after, like Troy, right? Man, uh, do you have an event that you could plug in or do you have a festival organizing this year or anything? Uh, we just had our festival in August, Transcendence Summerfest. It was a 10-day event. Um, we took a lot not of every heat, year? a lot of backlash from it because we opened up the doors and said, come one, come all, come as you are. We accept everyone. We will not be doing any um, regulations. If you want to wear masks, if you want to sanitize, if you want to vaccinate, that's totally up to you. Um, and it was a great event. We had a great time. And that's just how things should be. You know, it should be open and free. I um, I tend to agree with you on that one, and I was on the same boat. It's still in the same boat with you because I'm on the other side where my hotel, the one who's staying my festival, 
the one who calls the shots when it comes to the COVID rules, just you know, mandated that everyone who attends my festival, everyone that comes in to the hotel, whether they're employees or guests, uh, has to have a vaccination proof. You know, and uh, I also got backlash in that one when I put it on the website. That that's the hotel's decision, and they take it personally from me, where I did not make the decision. But mm -hmm. that's neither here nor there. And and we need to. You always have to ask where the people are coming from, the reasons they do things is because they do things, that's their choice. And uh, is that your transcendent thing? Is that every year? Yes, yeah, we're gonna be doing that every year. This was our fifth year. It, uh, it used to be Zukmi Summerfest, but we expanded quite a bit. So we brought in a lot of other modalities, movement modalities, nice. um, you know, medicine, music, um, we're going to be bringing in um, acro yoga, West Coast swing, blues fusion, cool. a lot of the conscious based modalities um, for people that just want to move and need to move. And movement is a healing thing. What is the website, my friend? Uh, transcendmenow.com. Nice. I also just launched actually last night. I just put up something quick. My, my website, Dr. Yumina or doctonomous.com. So dryumina.com or doctonomous.com. I'm going to be coming out with a lot of different uh, talks about health and wellness, about dance, about um, essentially autonomy in all aspects of life. And I like the uh, I like your Instagram name, the doctonomous thing. Doctonomous. I like, yeah, I'm going to start. Yeah. I'm going to start using that to promote living free in yeah. health and wellness in education. I've been working in education quite a bit. I have a startup company to essentially decentralize education globally, decentralize uh, health and wellness and the medical model, like empowering people, empowering humans to realize that they have the capacity, all the capacity that they need. Sounds good, brother. Um, yeah. yeah, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, to subscribe below. You would see a thumbs up there if you like this episode. If you didn't like it, you could put thumbs down also. That still uh, uh, does not affect my rank. But uh, uh, in fact, it probably boosts it. Uh, and comment if you need to comment. Question if you need to question. And one of us will probably be answering your question. But other than that, Anthony, it's been awesome. It's been an education. Uh, and it's good to, to, to uh, touch base with you, brother. You as well. Let's connect again soon. Yep. All right. Take Live care. a happy lifestyle. Bye for now. Ciao.